we were saying that um, if you leave developers, engineers, computer scientists alone, that could be one, one output that is not something that we really want to. Um, so we, in this course, we will try again to build on these two disciplines, one is AI and one is human with interaction, um, and we will try to build upon them without going deep in any of them, but looking at the intersection clearly between them. Um, so we, we made an example uh, about this uh, computing system, like this one here. Um, and I told you that interacting with a computer system is different than interacting with an AI-based system. So the question for you is, what is the difference? between me interacting with PowerPoint or me interacting with the AI-based version of PowerPoint. Uh, you have different expectations. So, like, when interacting with the AI, you expect it to be responsive, uh, intelligent. You may have different expectations, but expectations can also be set, so, right? So if we set properly expectation like oh this AI will generate images but of this kind and that's it uh, that could be um, and it's just not not vocal not language based natural language based so that could be a way to set proper expectation so one thing to do clearly when there is an AI system is to set expectation properly more than normally but what's different in the AI based interface. The AI system will also learn from what you do? The AI system can learn from what you do, but also cannot, it depends how it's done, but more or less. Let's use the example of classification again. Um, we want to predict if a message is sentimentally positive or negative. I don't know if it's correct, but let's say this one. So it's if this, in that message there is joy or not. Let's say that. When a classifier works in that way, what tell you? Tell you in this message there is, I'm sure that there is joy and I'm sure that there is not, or tell you something different than this. Or the chair. I'm, you show a picture of a chair and I tell you this is 100% a chair or is 0% a chair or will or is different than that. There might be a confidence score or something like that. Probability. Typically in, in the classification there is a, a, a probability, right, as percentage. So this chair is 85% a chair and 15% something else and whatever and if it's not you say this is 83 percent something is not a share and so this is a confidence value um, so there is uncertainty in the operations so in normal non-ai based computer system given an input you get an output and if you repeat the operation you get the same output there is no uncertainty but if you put some AI, some model, there could be some uncertainty. There could be percentages, there could be the precision we said before. Um, there could be false positive and false negatives. And the results can be incorrect, as we said for some, uh, someone here of Tesla, but also as we said of ChatGPT, again, the results was incorrect. Something you don't expect from a calculator to give you a wrong results, an AI system can give you a wrong results. And, and there are ways to, to take all this. One way is to blame the person. Uh, Tesla, and let's blame is maybe a strong word, but Tesla, for instance, if you read, or you can have access to the manual of the car, there are many places in which the manuals say um, 
If the zap pen is the driver that make a mistake. If the zap pen is the driver fault. If the zap pen is the driver. Hmm? Many, many ways. This is a typical car maker and car registration um, perspective because cars are up to now weren't be much intelligence in this perspective. So if you go off, off street, it's the driver typically go off street because there is no cars, no autonomy to do that. Um, so that is one way it's fault of the person. Um, and the other way also ChatGPT, well, well say 87, but you should understand that 87 is wrong. Why you didn't understand? Are you stupid? Um, no, it's just you confidently say that, I trust the system and I'm used to systems that are not AI based that are produce consistent results because ChatGPT is able to do other mathematical operation correctly. It's not doing mathematical operation to give you results of mathematical operation correctly. So it's not applied to every mathematical operation, just to some mathematical operation. And then maybe they get an upgrade and they solve this. Like in ChatGPT4, they can attach to uh, actual software and then it could be the software to do the calculation and give you the result. So it's not the large language model, but it's a dedicated software that can give you the results back like a calculator. So in that case, a person using that will see the right results. So it's an upgrade and things change. Hmm? I remember the first version of JetGPT, if you ask it uh, which color was the white horse of Napoleon, it will say, I don't know. Even if you say the white horse in the question. So it's just getting this information. Now, if you ask the same question, you get the right answer. And the answer is, as the question say, is white. Um, so there could be upgrade, there could be things that change, but there could be this uncertainty, this incorrectness that is intrinsic in a specific moment in time in an AI system that doesn't happen in non-AI system. Hmm? And we said that this unpredictable behavior can be something to laugh for, or something to say, oh, strange, why is 87? or also something that could be dangerous, like in the medical settings. Um, though this is a fundamental difference in interacting with AI system that we don't have in interacting with normal system. So before, ask, before designing an AI system, we should ask what problems should be solved by that system. The thing, the same, the same, the decision to use or not use the AI is a fundamental decision. Maybe there is a problem for which you don't need AI at all, uh, and be you use it in a product because it's better, is easier to sell. Maybe with AI, but you don't need that actually. So the decision to create a system that uses AI is just a fundamental decision per se, and it should be linked with a specific problem and the setting where it should be solved. Uh, which AI approaches match human expectation given the problem that we had before and which problem can be solved well enough for a particular use case. So these are the three things that we should ask before creating an AI system. Um, so why we are doing a course on this? Well, because it's clearly there is great interest in research. Um, there is well explainable AI again that is clearly intersecting with this. Uh, there is a human-centered AI that is uh, something else, similar but not identical to explainable AI, that is um, still part of research. So there is a research interest in this because again, you are a PhD student, so you are training as a researcher after all. Um, so this course, this 20 hour, will not be able to cover everything of this, clearly, um, but as I said before, we would like to give you some starting points, some directions, some tools, conceptual and practical, that are research-based, um, with some pointers to go deep in some uh, topic, if you want, um, and some general principle idea that still apply in many cases, even if they are still general and um, give an overview of the things. And also, you can talk with us also in the future if you, if you need any suggestion or any input on, on
on something more precise and more in-depth than, than this. Uh, I just listed here a few other relevant courses about AI or HCI that we do here. Um, all the, 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 the I ones are just taken from the PhD level course in Computer Engineer. Um, if I don't remember wrong, Neurosymbiotic Artificial Intelligence is trying to mix ontologies, knowledge representation and machine learning. Um, it's not the course that's trying, it's the field that is trying to. So putting together this representation knowledge with this mechanism. And there are other courses and HCI, it's uh, less represented. Uh, I would say then AI, I, I could write another slides for AI courses at Polytechnico. I just stopped at four. Um, human computer action, there is uh, a human computer action course and a master degree in computer engineer. And at PhD level, uh, there is the things that is more similar, uh, is information visualization and visual analytics. And then there is a course about VR, it's called extended reality, I think, but was already done. It was in the past. So you, you cannot attend it now because it was done a few months ago and that's why it's not here, but it's still related to, to different aspects of human computer interaction. If you're interested, these are courses, you can follow them, you can contact the teacher, you can get material for, for those courses if needed. Um, so since we are speaking about human AI interaction, why should be clear what we mean for human? Um, let me say what I mean for AI here. As I said before, in this course, we take AI as an umbrella term. So it's not specifically just machine learning or deep learning, but it's everything that could fall under the AI term. There could be machine learning, we made the example with classifier. It could be knowledge representation, it could be generative AI like ChatGPT, for instance, and it could be in various application areas. It could be in, in computer vision, it could be natural language understanding and processing, it could be in the medical sector, it could be applied in different um, areas. And, and this is my definition from the madness slide of AI. I ask you a definition, your personal definition of AI, and this was mine, uh, that was there as an example, a computer doing things that we expect people to be able to do. It's not maybe the best definition, it's most, most precise, but still one definition. So, for instance, recognize is a photo container chair. It's something we are able to do, and we can uh, train a computer to do that. Or compute direction from here to IKEA to take the pictures for above. Um, infer that the chair is a piece of furniture, is knowledge representation. We have furniture, there is table, chairs, chairs is a piece of furniture. Or recommend a movie. So these are things that we can do, all of them, and we can expect a computer to do them as well. We can recommend a movie. If you ask me, if, if I ask you, suggest me a movie, you will have your options. I mean, you will ask me which are your preferences, etc., and then you say, okay, this movie is nice. Did you see it? Hmm? So these are all things we can quickly and simply do. Hmm? And so one definition of AI could be that we expect computers to do these things that we expect them to do. And these are your definition of AI. So the madness session is going to happen in a while, but also use those slides to get your definition to put here. And these are not all the definition, because I went, I did this slide um, yesterday morning, I think. So not all the, the, the definition were there, but some of them, let's say the first 10, 12 slides are represented here. And highlighted some bold uh, sentences. Um, so according to you, AI yeah, is something that thinks and acts as human, and in some cases is a superhuman. Um, so thinks and acts, both uh, definitions are interesting, and it's two people said more or less the same thing, I just pick the first one. Um, something that sense, think and learn, uh, that is similar to the first one, it's not identical, 
uh, in the second one is missing the acting part and the first one is missing the sensing and learning part hmm? so the first one is about reasoning and acting on environment acting on something and the third one is about getting information reasoning again and learn from experience but apparently not acting and with the human-like capabilities um, a digital tool and there are three of them three of you that say that is a tool that's interesting it's not a machine or something it's a tool uh, that meets complex user needs and we have said that is not always the case not always AI meets the user needs meets the creator needs meets the creator problem meets the creator ideas um, a great tool to help and enhance human work so something to support people uh, instead of in a way replicating like the human-like capabilities here uh, a useful tool to go behind the limits of many discipline a little bit more abstract this as a definition but still as a definition um, providing intelligence to machine through mathematical models and interaction more specific again thinking thinking uh, and connected this intelligence in this case through mathematical models so the black box we said before is the encyclopedia that came to life is sort of poetic i don't know if if the person write that is here um, but it's more about i understand this is more about uh, providing knowledge is there the person write this right it's more about providing knowledge right because encyclopedia is um, a third brain hemisphere um, I don't know if the person is here no it was by it's, it's a biomedical student uh, I think with a background in medicine so I don't really can infer but still about intelligence um, uh, emulating the potential of the human brain with all the limits of the human brain so still around intelligence uh, it's like magic but with algorithms there are two of them similar uh, just is the first one so it's, this make the pair with my AI magic in the other slides um, so it's more generic it's not just about intelligence but it's about doing more things and system that treats information automatically so this is more about I think the sensing part and the thinking part and maybe the learning part the treating information I don't know I don't remember who wrote this but these are some common things uh, if we cluster this we can say that there are some definition about human-like capabilities the first one the second one the um, this the, this one here an attempt emulating and so these are emulating some something human-like a definition that say artificial intelligence is something that can replace human because can create something human-like in some cases at least and the other that see as a tool or something that can support people um, meets user needs help and enhance um, maybe also magic between algorithms is something that could go in both definition so but there are these two tension here about um, emulating or being like a human or something like a tool and uh, I, I like the, the the choice of these three verbs that are tool hmm? so it's not a machine that replaces that uh, is, is like a human but it's a tool an instrument that people can use to do stuff hmm? so two different perspective here um, two different tension here um, what did your colleagues mean for AI in the past edition of this course um, also there there was something there was one that is not here I think that was very nice no that was like surely not the Ryan Air bot as a definition of AI um, 
but among these, they say that something is thrilling, disturbing, intelligent, deterministic operation, something never seen before, solving problem on their own, cool applications, machine capable of performing any task, uh, something able to discover the unknown, um, a child prodigy as invention as big as the fire in the Stone Age. Uh, Increase productivity and efficiency. Tool to enhance life, so the tool is here again. Like a human being, but better. Hoping it doesn't kill us all. Um, this was your colleague in 2022. Um, and also, this is not the full list of, of sentences. Um, so again, also here, there is something about thinking, intelligence. Uh, there was more. Um, your, message, your definition are more positive, in a way, they also represent something that could be thrilling, disturbing, this could be disturbing, or tricks, or um, other things. So there was also some negative aspects of technology. And let's do the game in 2020 also. This was the third edition of the course. Um, we did this edition just before COVID. Uh, we complete the course and then we go in lockdown. So it was one of the last courses done in person here in 2020. Uh, taking decision, answering question, self-conscious, explainable and creative behavior, a tool again that makes decision, human empowerment, so these are more similar to yours in a way as a definition. Uh, algorithms great for solving some hard problem. Uh, transferring human intelligence into machine and we had a long discussion with this person this, that day uh, machine capable of reasoning and then again another tool to let human be humans by delegating tasks to machine so again there are some similarities with with yours and similarities between different here but you see there is not a clear one single definition omnicomprehensive of artificial intelligence that was done at this point for, by I think 80 students, more or less, in these three years. Um, and especially some of them. So here in these slides, there is one definition that actually can be done without AI. I can apply this definition to a, a software, let's say, without the need of AI. Can you spot which is? Well, computer taking decisions as they are thinking, no, sorry, the thinking part. Well, without the thinking part, maybe, yeah. but with the thinking part. Are yeah, partially, it could be done also without the eye. We have some problems solved without needing the eye. But there was another one. Maybe the last one. Who said that? Yeah. It's the last one. Why is the last one? Because, you know, algorithm for some problem, yes, we have algorithm can solve problem, and we have AI algorithms that are better to solve other problems. So it's fair to include both. The last one, why the last one doesn't really need AI as it's written, at least? Yes. We already delegate tasks to machines. And we do it since centuries, I would say. So dishwasher or the washing machine are a way to delegate tasks that we don't want to do to a machine. And we don't need AI to delegate tasks. Maybe we need AI to complete the task in some cases. Maybe it depends on the task. But then it's about taking decisions, thinking, etc. But the act of delegating task doesn't need AI. We can delegate task already to computers. And we can imagine other ways to do that without the need of AI, right? Again, this is one of the definitions that probably is the less fitting for AI. Because we can delegate task already without any need of extra support in that case. 
Okay, so close the introductory part. Let's speak about our logistics of the course. So the, let's say, teaching philosophy, you already have probably understood that. So let me start saying that there is no things like a teaching philosophy, just a title. But the, let's say, the approach that we will have um, for this course is that we try to do something that is good and understandable for all of you. As we will see, we have a huge variety of background, not expectation, as we said, but a huge variety of background in this course. Um, so we, we need to do something that is good enough for, for everybody. Interactivity, we already said that. Um, the course will be learn by doing and do by learning. So there will be a mix of lectures and practical exercise and things to do. So it will not be 20 hours of someone speaking. Even in this interactive way, it will be more like 10 hours of speaking and 10 hours of doing. And this doing will be attached to what is told uh, before. Um, and also we will try to use some, so not just do something to learn, but also um, we will use the idea that to learn, to really learn something, you have to teach it. And I don't know if you already, do you have already some courses as teachers, as teacher in the class? And more or less, and on topic that you didn't know maybe very, very well. Yes. And you learned a lot or not? Yes. yes. So typically, maybe there will be differences. If when you need to teach some topic, you will need to learn better than you studying on your own because you not you not only need to understand what you are going to say but you need to be prepared to communicate what you need to say and so if i possess 80 percent of what i need to communicate then maybe 60 percent to reach out to you um, and then you may have question that i'm not covering and so i need to also figure out what what to say and how to answer and maybe the question give us me more opportunity to learn so it's teaching something is actually um, a good way to, to learn when, when possible. So we are going to apply this into a specific moment. Uh, one is a panel that will be the exercise of next week. And the other one is a workshop style session, which you will have to do, but also we have to, to speak with, with others. Um, so you are, as you said, I said there are quite a variety. So I see 35 students enrolled uh, on the portal here, you are not 35, clearly. Uh, but among them, there is, um, let's say, half, let's say half, from the in Computer and Control Engineering, and then there is more or less the same number from other PhD programs at Polytechnico, including Electrical, Electronics, Communication Engineering, Architecture, History, and Projects, Bioengineering, Energetics, Management, National PhD in Artificial Intelligence, Civil and Environmental um, Engineering, and Urban and Regional Development. And so these are more or less the, um, your PhD uh, as I see from the Portale. So these are, as I said before, we try to do a course that is good enough for all of these. So not just good enough for computer engineer, but also approachable and doable for, for the others. And you also have very different research interests. I, again, got this from the slides that you're going to, to show us. Um, so there are about um, art and science, um, a bunch of you, do, a, a couple of you doing something about artificial, uh, no, it's not artificial. It's augmented reality, mixed reality, a virtual reality in the domain of extended reality, not real reality, uh, digitalization for product, computational mechanics, uh, predictability of digital plans on humans, and the picture on the slides was about uh, the plans for um, medical plans. Um, and then intracoronary psychology and cardiology. Uh, vehicle to vehicle communication and cooperation, medical image segmentation, deep learning, databases and large language model, gamification software engineering, neural network optimized for hardware restraint, 
um, device, so limited competition limited device, uh, AI plus architecture, explainable AI, or responsible AI, so etc. And then again, I stopped at slide 12, something like this. And so these are more or less the uh, sometimes condensated together, put together the, the, your research topic. So different background, different interests, also research, very different, like cardiology. Um, for me, also a little bit architecture, could be space architecture, I don't remember what I was saying, um, but, but still very, very different uh, things. Um, uh, who we are? Well, I already introduced myself. Uh, I am Associate Professor, the Department of Computer Control and Computer Engineer, and I'm working on human computer interaction um, specifically. And then there will be Alberto with me that will do the half of the course. As I was saying before, he is an assistant professor in tenure track in the same department, so we are both computer engineers. And he's working on digital well being, so it's not strictly related to, um, to AI in general, but he also used techniques for digital well-being, and digital well-being means uh, how people use and overuse technology and so get a well-being in that sense, not in a medical, let's say, perspective. And these are our emails if you need to reach out to us. And these are briefly the course topic. We already, you have already probably read that. Uh, today we're doing this introduction. Next time, we'll do this trade-off and perspective in human interaction. Then we'll move on designing and evaluating systems, techniques to do that. And we will close with um, uh, a case study on creating and evaluating using the things we have seen before, a prototype of a conversational agent. So something you can type information on a specific domain you will choose and it should provide answers, set the expectation correctly, etc, 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 according to the things we are going to, to see uh, before. Um, all the material for the course is not on the Portale della Didattica, it is on the website reachable to that address um, that is that the short link, the, the full path is going to li.polito.it and then select teaching, human interaction, and in the schedule you will see something like this, it's the schedule of the course, um, and materials will be linked from here, and in this spot here there will be the video recording of the lectures, if they um, so we, we record and then if they, the video comes well we will put it online. Um, all this room should have power outlets at the desk, do they? Well, not at every desk. Some power outlets per desk, per, per, per row, um, but should be enough for, for many people. Well, it's, it's a, you're less than the seats, so if you need, so you are encouraged to attend with your laptop as you are already doing, um, especially to work on the proposed exercise. Uh, and everything will be reachable from this website, so no login needed, just um, public information there. Um, so, what's the plan? And then we'll see if we can stick to the plan, I think, I think so, for five lectures. So the plan is to have five classes, today the first one. As I said before, 50% will be interactive lectures and 50% exercise. Uh, every time we'll have four hours, like today, and they will all be in the morning in this room uh, in those dates. So the next class will be on Friday. And then we will end before mid-February. Um, what we're going to do with more detail, and then again, all this information are on the website. Today we are doing course introduction, done. Logistics, that's what we're doing now. And introduction to human interaction, that's the fundamentals that we, we still need to do. Um, and introduction to the exercise of next week. That will be a reading panel. So you are going to do panels 
in the first two hours of next week. And again, I'm going to, to describe to you what is uh, that you have to do uh, specifically. And then we will follow up on the same topic with the panel with a lecture on perspective on human interaction and the different way, the different tension that exists in this domain between, as you also more or less uh, put in your definition, between replacing or creating something that is human-like and a tool for supporting people. And this, this tension exists also in the literature. And this will be lecture number two. And I will do both of them uh, today, clearly, and also next one. Uh, lecture three will be about designing, evaluating, interactive system, again, from a conceptual point of view, but also with some concrete tools, guidelines to do that. And there will be a design and evaluation workshop in which you will take a fictionary uh, user interface, I think about running, if I remember correctly, and you will try to apply these uh, things you have seen before to fix any problem and sort of evaluate what's going on there. Uh, and this fictionary user interface has some AI component in it. Then the last two classes will be basically dedicated to work that you do. Um, so Alberto will give a brief introduction to conversational agents um, with some material. And then there will be this exercise that will last six hours, more or less. So two hours in lecture four, two hours in lecture five, and then the very last moment in lecture five will be completing the exercise and present the results to me and Alberto, they will be both here. Uh, and this exercise will be about designing and implementing, again, a prototypal conversational assistant for a specific domain, a specific topic that you will select uh, at the beginning of this exercise. So these are, these are hours in which you can work here so that you hopefully don't have to do much work outside of the class and still um, pass the the exam for this course. Um, this is also linked, before we get to the exam, to my personal, let's say, philosophy. I was saying the teaching philosophy. Uh, this is more a personal thing about PhD courses. So I think that PhD courses should be uh, interesting or easy. So. Mm. If you select a course for, for any of the, of the material, if it's interesting, then good for you, select it. And doesn't matter if then it's easy or not to pass. But if it's not interesting, the other factor I think you should look at is it's terrible, difficult to pass the exam. It will require me 100 hours to pass the exam or not. And if the answer is it will require me 100 hours to pass the exam, look for alternatives. So that is my take on this thing. So what we try to do here is we cannot speak about interesting. That's your take if this course is interesting, but at least we can make it not much difficult. So go in the easy uh, way. That's why all the things that we do, we will have you doing in class, uh, except the panel preparation that you need to do on your own. That's the only thing. Everything else will happen in class. So after like class number five, you have done with this course. We can register the score, the evaluation of the, of the course, and you don't have anything else to do for this course. And we will also give you some time here to actually work on, the, on your exercises so that you can complete them in class mostly and don't spend much time outside class. A little bit probably you will need to, but this will should help to, um, to cover some activities already here, because I imagine you have other things to do in your day, like not only research and the exams in this period, but also like the rest of your life. Um, so, we, we make space for, for you to, to work on this with us, so that if you have a problem, you don't understand something, you don't know how to do something, we, Adrian, Alberto, me, are here to, to help 
and to guide you in the right direction so that in the end you can really not only learn things from a conceptual perspective in memory, by memory, but also have hands on experience on how to apply these things even in a prototypal and simple uh, projects are they could be. So what's given this introduction, what's the exam about? The exam is about the three exercises you will carry out in class, essentially. You do the exercise, you deliver the exercise, and the exam is done. You successfully deliver the exercise. So the first exercise will be next week, and it will be individual exercise, and it's the panel. And again, it needs to be prepared before Friday, and I will give you information about this in a while. The second exercise will be during the third class, so during the third class, and it will be this design evolution workshop on applying these guidelines and ideas on how to design a human AI, effective human AI system uh, that will be done in class, in group. And the final exercise will be this case study prototype presentation that again will last classes four and five and again needs to be done in group. Uh, to pass the exam, since you can pass the exam or pass with merit, apparently, if you want to just pass the exam, you need to complete two of these three exercises with success and one of the two must be the case study. So the case study plus the design, the case study plus the panel are enough to pass the exam. If you want to marry it, you have to pass all of three. Um, and any question about this? So is this not a problem if you can't pass them if you get stuck on lesson twice, for example? Could I use a roadmap like that? Or, yeah. Yes, if you, if you skip one of these, you can still pass the exam. Um, but... So it's not the same group for the second one? Well, ideally it's the same group. So yes, one thing there is a light about that. So clearly we need group formation. And also why we do also the madness, because since you are from different PhD courses and maybe there is one person from the PhD on X, then this person needs to be in a group. So you can also introduce you, yourself to the others and so that the others know who, they, who you are and you can join group today or in the next um, class. Uh, the group should be the same. But let me say one thing more before the groups. So the preferred way to follow the course is in person, as you are here. Um, however, if we learn something from the past four years is that life happens. And so lecture will be video recorded. I'm video recording this one. That's why you have two microphones. Um, and we will share them after the classes. So if you skip a lecture, this will not be streamed, but you can watch the video after, afterward. So even if you are not here, skipping a lecture is something you can watch after. Uh, group exercises can have hybrid groups. That means that at least one person must be here in the room, at least one. Otherwise it's not hybrid, it's fully virtual. Um, and the other can connect through the computer of the person in the room, of the people in the room. And they will need to connect clearly. So if you are not here but you have available, time um, and you can connect remotely you can connect remotely also if you are somewhere else doing other stuff and you cannot connect remotely then it's another case but this is this possibility if you can make time to connect remotely for the group exercise for the individual exercise uh, i would prefer to have you in class because the panels are not really working well with some people in class and some people not but if you really cannot be here um, 
and you want to join remotely, we can set up a Zoom call for the people that cannot join in person, but you need to tell me via email who you are so that I can share the Zoom link with you just for the panel. So summary, lecture, video recorded, group exercise can be hybrid, but people, there is, should be at least one person in the room and other can connect through the people in the room. We are not providing any connection and the panel, ideally you should be here if you cannot, because you are somewhere else, but you can still connect to, to present. Um, you can send me an email and I will share with you a Zoom link and you will connect via Zoom when it's time for you to speak or to answer any question. Okay? Any question? To do group composition. So form a group for the coming activities, um, ideally three, not ideally, three to five people per groups. Ideally, three to four, given the number of people around the course and the number of people present here is better, three to four people, so that group of three and group of four are more or less the same capability work. Uh, there is a simple spreadsheet with one line for each group uh, and it asks you a contact name for so one of the people of the group is the leading of the group and it asks for a contact email just in case we need to contact the group extra class for whatever reason uh, and this must be done by January 30. So today is the 22, eight day to form a group and you can use the breaks here, the breaks next time because next time will be the 26 to uh, compose a group, three, four people. And I encourage computer engineer to, to welcome an electronic engineer to welcome non-ICT, people from non-ICT areas. Um, and especially computer engineers since it's the biggest group uh, among the enrolled students in the class. Um, and everybody can help in one way or another. Okay? All good? So, other question for you. How, who doesn't know anything about programming? Nothing. Okay. Um, so for the case study, we will probably need some of that and you can help in some other way, maybe on the design evaluation part. It's not going to be programming intensive. It's not to be extremely complicated. Um, I said, I write, do you know enough programming? I don't even know what is enough programming, but you need just something a little bit. So for the case study, only for the case study, you will need to know some Python preferably, uh, but other languages may be okay. Pick one, not just the two there, two there, just pick one languages. And this is just needed for the case study. And we also provide an example and a project to get started on, at least one. Um, in the past years, we gave just one project of a conversational agent to, to show you how it works. And then that could be the starting point to to build up. We were also speak, speaking the other day with Alberto to, to see if we can use ChatGPT for, um, for part of this a case study, but without having anybody paying. So we, we need to understand what's possible, otherwise we'll revert to the classical case or we can give both options. And then you, you, can, uh, you can pick one and yeah, in the case study, there will be some things to do also for non-programming, for sure. Uh, and then, since this will happen mostly during the class hour, we, not me, Alberto will be here. And so if you need any input or any, or any trouble, you can speak with him and he can help you solve 
the technical issues that you may found. But this is again, it's we call it case study prototype. So it's not something that should be ready for production after the course. It should be something that it works enough well and for enough time for completing the course. And then if the day after stop working at all, it's fine. For, for us, it's fine. For you, it's your choice. Um, any question? No? Everything is clear, yes. So what we, what we did the last time we did this course was using a natural language understanding cloud platform for setting up the conversation, so answer and question, and then using programming to, inter, to get information and send requests to this cloud platform and build up a, some kind of user interface using web technologies in the example that we had uh, for demonstrating the application of various principles and guidelines that we, we show you before starting that exercise. That was what we did in the last two editions of the course. And we pick up a cloud um, platform that can be free to use, at least for what we need, and can give you uh, quite um, flexibility in setting up the, the various conversations, which are the question, which are the answer that you can receive, which are the attributes, etc. So if we go that way, that will be something like that. If we are going to use also, or an alternative, um, GPT-3.5, GPT then it will be different. Yeah, the program part is more related to okay. the presentation and in acquiring input and getting output and presenting them in a good way. We are not going to, to ask you to do a machine learning model from scratch. You can, again, you can use whatever we, we suggest you, or let's say you're working on a machine learning model for a chat system on your own, and that could be usable here, you, you're free to use it but it's not something you have to do for the course, okay? okay? Because we are, we put ourselves in the, um, again, in the middle, right, between the person and the eyes, so we are interested in what's happened in that point, in that position, not one side or the other, okay? Any other? Yes. Professor, you say that it's preferable to use Python. What about MATLAB? MATLAB is not okay. It's not, it's not going to work. We need a programming language outside of a constrained environment like MATLAB. Last call, any question? Okay, let's do this and then let's do the, um, uh, the, the madness session and a break. Um, so let's imagine this scenario, right? Um, I, general person, uh, I am machine learning expert and a smart home enthusiast and I had a great idea to apply AI in my home. So I put everything, sensor, actuators, lamps, whatever is needed. And also software and hardware enough for doing whatever. And after an adequate period of data, let's trust that this machine learning expert know 
what is an adequate period of data collection about my habits at home, I finally wrote a system, AI system, to automatize my most frequent habits. So, for instance, these are the things that the AI detected and then it make automatic for me. The AI detected that almost every morning, Monday to Friday, I wake up at 6.30. Then I turn on the light. Then I open the window for around 10 minutes. Then I start my coffee machine. So since this is things that the after an adequate period of time, the data collection, the I build this model and say, okay, I found this as a routine that you have. So Monday to Friday, 6.30, when it's Monday to Friday, 6.30, turn on the light, open the windows for 10 minutes, and then start the coffee machine. That's the system will automatically execute these steps. Okay? So, thinking of that, and then I can go back to the description if needed. Is it a good problem to solve? We don't know if artificial intelligence is the best tool to solve this problem. Actually, AI is just needed for getting right the habits automatically without me thinking, oh, but I wake up at 6.30 and then I need to set up some automation on my own. Just a short recommender of automation that I enable. Let's say that we decided, that's a good point. As I said before, the decision to use or not use AI, it's a fundamental point to be considered. And in this case, this machine learning expert decided to use that. So given the decision is a good problem, a reasonable problem, it's maybe it's not needed AI, but still as a problem. Do you see any why not or why yes? You don't think it's a good problem to automatize some habits because you say I'm, I'm building, I'm staking habits. So if I just remove the first one, I don't have the second one that automatically start because it's yeah, something like that. Yeah. Yeah, you, the other perspective is to say this is trivial things to do, like opening the windows. It's not something that uh, is, is deeply involving me, just it's something probably do on automatic, opening the windows, turn on the light without even thinking, and it's not removing the, the joy of drinking the coffee or to read or to do some more meaningful way. That's another view. Anybody else? And then we'll move to the next question. Yeah. Maybe from a user perspective, could be useful to also like to add uh, uh, human feedback uh, about uh, the emotional state of the user regarding doing or not doing these tasks. Like how I feel in that moment uh, and knowing that uh, the AI performed that tasks. You say considering also emotion. Well, consider two things here. I'm not disagreeing with the two of you, but consider two things here. One is that I decided to do this for myself. So it's, it's not something that you do and I need to use it. That's my decision. I am the one that I decided to apply AI and I decided that this is a good habit to automate. So it's, it's my decision. Then there could be other factors, there could be other opinions, but in this example, it's my decision to do that. Then we can discuss if the utility of this, if it's uh, 
If spending time to automate these and create a machine learning model to just automate this trivial task is something actually appropriate or could have had a better use of my time, that's another story. But it could be a sort of reasonable problem is for me, waking up every morning and with this trivial task is a, is a huge pain, that could be one, um, one thing to consider. Um, the second question, does it solve the morning routine totally? I imagine this is my full morning routine. I don't have anything else after drinking coffee and go, go out and go to the bathroom and then go out. This is all go to work if I'm working at home. So this is the beginning of a morning routine. Do I solve that entirely? No, why not? Okay, doesn't consider a sun, Saturday and Sunday. Okay, so it doesn't do anything on those two days? Lights are still on at the end of the thing. Lights are still on at the end of the thing. I need to turn off. Yeah, okay. It doesn't actually consider if a user gets up or not. It doesn't actually consider if I wa actually wake up at 6.30. But it, well, after you wake up the window and turn on the light, in winter, probably you wake up. Uh, but yeah, that's a good point. What else? It's open the window. It's raining, snowing. Open the windows anyway. Yes. What else? Make a coffee not only in the yes. Let's imagine that this is a very smart coffee machine that also put coffee in it. That just doesn't happen. But yeah. Or it starts a coffee machine, and you have two results. One, you get coffee. One, you need a new coffee machine. <laughs> you can pick one. But it does the, the work. Um, but yeah, so this is a problem with the coffee machine. You, you actually need to prepare the coffee machine the day before, otherwise this will probably n need you to, r to replace the coffee machine. It also doesn't uh, actually clean the coffee cup uh, after I finish. It's a minimum return. Okay, but let's, let's stop here. Let's not go to the next activities after. What else? All, all these things are right, and all these things are in the um, does it solve? We say no for, for all many of these reasons, but there are other reasons. It can start even if I'm not home. It can start even if I'm not home. If I'm not home, Monday, Friday, 6 30 a.m., turn on the light, open the window, start a coffee machine. Yeah, there could be something here if you want to improve it, something here that say, or the night before or some moment before, something here that say, okay, I actually wake up at 6.30, as he was saying before. I was actually wake up at 6.30 because if there is nobody in the home, I didn't wake up. Maybe I wake up at 6.30, but not there. So nothing of this should happen. So it needs a better sensing activity here to actually understand if I actually wake up at 6.30. Connected to this, what is ignoring? Ignoring the human presence. Yeah, we said that. Wake up. What else is ignoring? Just focus on Monday, Friday, 6.30. If I don't want to wake up at 6.30. Why can decide not to wake up at 6.30, for instance? Because... Because it's holiday, yeah, because you can then have many reasons. But let's say one simple thing, it's holiday. So if we have 6.30, otherwise I cannot be at work by 9, let's say. But it's holiday, so I don't need to go to work at by 9. And so maybe I decide not to wake up at 6.30. Or maybe I need to go to Rome, and to go to Rome I need to wake up at 6 because otherwise I, I miss the train and I need to be in Rome at 10, 10.30, 11. And if I wake up at 6.30, I will skip my train. So there are a lot of things that happens, can happen here. Um, one more. Yes, if it's summer, I don't need to open the windows. Actually, it doesn't speak about any shutter. 
right? So in this moment, the, the shutter is closed, so you don't see much light from the outside. But anyway, one more thing. Worst, if I'm not alone. Because here, I don't say that this machine learning expert is living alone. Maybe they are in four in the house. And maybe two of them stay in the same room. I have them the same uh, under the, of the other person. Yeah, there is another person. Well, this is in theory detected. So this is something that happens every morning. So in theory, the other person is fine. With that, maybe it's fine for a period, and that maybe is not fine for another period. And so you need to, to have some way to refine, to stop, to, to interact with this. And then, as he was saying before, you don't need AI to, to do this, but the AI is needed to detect the habits. But see how many things can go wrong, how many things we can forget, uh, including the turning off the light. Maybe I didn't detect algorithm to turn off the light because I didn't have, for whatever reason, that information. So I know that you turn on, but I don't know when you turn off. Or maybe you turn off in different moments, so the suggestion was just turn on because turn off was too uncertainly to, to say a specific now after like the window. I open the windows for 10 minutes, that specific amount of time after which I'm going to close it. Um, but maybe, again, it's winter, so the lights stay on more, or it's summer and the lights stay on less time. So that could be uh, pretty uncertainty and predictability there. Um, any failure and possibility to recover? We already think covered this. And a better way not to do this probably is not using AI or not automating at all according to personal um, preferences. But which is the, let's say, in this scenario, is there any problem, anything that doesn't work for the, with the AI model used in this way? We need to, to build a better AI model here to make this scenario working or not. Yes. I, I think that we have to apply also some sensor, for example, for uh, understanding the weather, for some uh, API with the calendar, for uh, TV holidays, or money appointments, or money meetings. We have to apply more. Yeah, we, we get more sensing and get more data, but then it's the model totally wrong. In this case, if we decide to use it, we, we can refine it, adding more sensor, more, more things. That is not going to solve the problem because I don't know you, but I don't have waking up all the appointments in my calendar, especially in the holidays, for instance, right? So maybe I have something to do, but it's not written in a calendar. So if I want to really to use this, I need to force myself to put everything in the calendar, including go for a walk, buy, buy milk everything that's maybe is not something that you want to to do yes not really not really uh, yes yes let's say that there could be way to improve the recognition of a person at home if it's not something that is done with 100 percent uh, precision and certainty, R people recognition in free spaces. Um, but let's say that could be some way fix some of this the thing, so I can turn off the light and then can buy a better coffee machine that also put coffee in it and the, the cup under the coffee machine automatically, so a robotic coffee machine. Let's imagine all of that. Um, but, but still, the, all, all of this has nothing to do with the AI. It's more sensors, more API. It's not the model per se that is wrong. It's what's the context that needs to be more uh, suitable for the AI model to get 
precise information. And then there is one thing that can still create problem long term with this kind of automations especially. you become addicted to this routine but there is one source huge source of trouble in this scenario potential trouble in this scenario that we already mentioned but i want you to mention it again not home. Hmm? Not who is not being home yeah, the, human not home the, the human is the big source of trouble here because i learned this routine with job A, but then I switch job. And I work from home, so I don't need to wake up 6.30. Or I decide to go running every morning, so I want to wake up 6 or 5. I don't know. Or I cannot get coffee anymore, and I start to make tea. Or I got married, and so when this was collected, it was one person, now there are two. Or I got a child, a newborn child, and so he's crying all night long. So I don't clearly wake up at 6.30. Nobody's waking up at 6.30 because we are all wake up already since hours. So there could be many things that happens. And this way of automating, described in this way, is collecting historical data to make a decision about the future. But in a scenario like a home, there are so many things that can change in people's life that make history not always accurate to make prediction for the future. So this is something human here is the cause of trouble for the algorithm. And then, and then probably one answer we, we should add, one question we should ask is, is AI the good way to do this? Or is automation the good way to solve this? And we have opinion on this side of the room that say no, it's not. And probably is right, it's not either automation or either AI. But here, when we think about is this a good problem to solve, we should think about not just the single people living now in the home, but what means to live in a house that's over time changing things. And I can, I can wake up differently, there's holiday, there is holiday not on the calendar, just my vacation. It's not an holiday on the calendar, but I take the day off today. I'm sick, it's not on holiday, I'm not putting on a calendar tomorrow will be sick, right? I, I don't know. So all these things may happen and people are typically a mess. That's not the most accurate term, but give it an idea. And when you focus too much on this kind of automation, don't think about people, then there will be some uh, trouble that can make things work less or less well. So again, this is another example to see that even a familiar context like a home can have some many different aspects to consider before deciding to apply AI and decide which problem to solve. Okay, yes. I don't know you. I, I, don't, I don't know you. I, I don't really like to talk a lot at six thirty in the morning to, with, with advice. Oh, you, are you wake up? Yes, now I am. Yeah. <laughs> because you wake up and I'm talking since five minutes. Uh, yeah, there could be many things one can do to tackle some of these problems, some more annoying than others. But yeah, that could be. Uh, but it's not going holistically solve uh, all this scenario because, again, I. I don't want to wake up 6.30, I need to take a train, I need to wake up earlier. So yes, I need to move my alarm on, on the Amazon Echo and I need to put an Amazon Echo in my bedroom and etc. And also, you know, before you we were speaking about cameras, do you want to put a camera that's recording 24 hours a day in your bedroom? Are you sure? Um, Okay, so now let's do, let's stop the recording.